There's anger, a sense of shock over the judgment of the Pune court that allowed a 17-year-old teenager bail within hours of the teenager driving a speeding Porsche and killing two people as he rammed it on the bike. That's the CCTV on your screens. There are so many aspects to the story, including unanswered questions and the claims of the police. But we are going to look at one particular aspect, the demand by many and the claim by cops regarding the accused, a 17-year-old to be treated as an adult or, in fact, to be tried as an adult. Who can decide this? What are the precedents? Let's listen in to the cops first. In a very unfortunate incident, uh, yesterday, two young lives were lost due to a uh, rash driving by an underage uh, accused under the influence of liquor. We have moved and we are moving an application today to appeal against the said order of the of the concerned court, which refused our application to try the juvenile as an adult since this was a heinous crime. We we will we we are trying to take judicial orders and shall uh, take further action as per the orders of the honourable court. Parent, the father of the accused juvenile accused who handed over this car without a number plate to the juvenile accused to drive and allowed him to go to a to a to a pub oblique a restaurant which was serving alcohol has also been proceeded against under section 75 of the juvenile justice act i can tell you that the late running of pubs is a matter which has been handled at, at top priority by the by the city police we have had a series of discussions with the senior officers of, of, of ours and also with concerned departments, we shall start an intensive drive henceforth in coordination with the Residents Association to try and ensure that this menace is, is removed permanently. Do you remember the 2016 Delhi Mercedes hit and run case where a 17 year old was driving the Mercedes and killed a young man? 2016, the juvenile board had held that the juvenile had committed a heinous offence and therefore should be tried as an adult. It was challenged in high court by the accused and the high court ruled against it. Eventually, this high court verdict was challenged by the deceased victim's sister in Supreme Court. But Supreme Court upheld the high court verdict and said this was a serious offence, not a heinous offence. Remember the Hyderabad Jubilee gang rape case? A juvenile justice board ordered four of the minors accused in the case to be tried as adults. Four of the five minors. They were accused of gang raping a teenager. The juvenile justice board court had said the four minors were capable of understanding the consequences of their actions, stating that the suspects were not under the influence of alcohol or any other substance, that there were no compelling circumstances to commit the offence. The offences in this case, though, are of different nature. Remember the 2012 Nirbhaya case. Due to what people cried as the crime's heinous nature, there were demands that the juvenile rapist be considered as an adult. He was eventually released after three years in correctional home. It was in 2015 that there were amendments to the JJ Act or the Juvenile Justice Act that defined petty offences serious offences and heinous offences. Heinous offences being murder, rape, decoity, among others. Imprisonment for seven years or more was allowed. Replacing the Juvenile Justice Act 2000, the 2015 Act for the first time provided for trying juveniles in the age group of 16 to 18 as adults in cases of heinous crimes. Section 15 of the Juvenile Justice Act provides that in cases of a heinous offence alleged to have been committed by a child who has completed or is above the age of 16 years, the board shall conduct a preliminary assessment regarding his or her mental and physical capacity to commit such offence, ability to understand the consequences of the offence and the circumstances. Well, joining us right now is Prashant Patil who's a lawyer of the accused in this particular case, the 17-year-old teenager who was driving the Porsche that killed two people. Thank you very much, Mr. Prashant Patil, for joining us. My first question to you, 
There are many aspects to this Pune horror. However, we are, we are talking essentially about the growing demand to try the 17-year-old teenager as an accused, as an adult in this particular case, and not as a juvenile alone. Cops have sought for this as well. Your response. See, there is an amendment in 2019 to the Juvenile Justice Act. We all know about the amendments. If the investigating agencies feel that the particular accused needs to be tried as an adult, there is a provision under the scheme of the act that they will have to move an application to the court. The court then issues notice to us, as in the accused. The proceedings are carried out and the Honorable Court then passes an order. At this point of time, until and unless any notice is served to us, because I do not know the merits, why would any agency move that kind of an application? But if it is moved, we will deal with it according to the judgments of the Honorable Bombay Court. There are certain judgments that on what criteria this particular concept of a person is juvenile or an adult is decided. There has to be a psychiatrist report. There are many other ingredients to it. So it follows the procedure of law. It will not happen overnight. It will not happen at the whims and fences of a particular person. So we will wait until the notice is served. We will go through the merits of the notice okay. and then we'll decide. No, but heinous crime is clearly defined. Cops have said as much so in this particular case, particularly in this case with respect to the accused. I'm trying to see what's the exception to this legally. I'll tell you what, the legal aspect, the academic aspect to all this is, any offense in our country, when we have to deal with it on a criminal jurisprudence, it has to have intention or knowledge. These are the two ingredients, primary ingredients which are required. So intention and knowledge will define whether it's a case under section 304 or section 304A, whether whatever ingredients are attracted according to the course of investigation. As of now, yesterday, when we argued the bail, 304A was applied against the accused, the minor, which he was entitled for a bail. If during the course of investigation, the officers feel, as in the prosecution feel, that they have to now apply 304 because they have got some evidence to that effect, then they will have to move the court. The court has to issue notice to us whether it is an applicable section or not. There will be an argument, academic argument, whether the bail has to be cancelled because there is a new section applied. The bail was given in less than 15 hours after two people were killed. Are you saying all people in this country are treated the same way? Sneha, yeah, I'll tell you what, in my limited years of practice and limited years of experience, there have been many cases of such nature where you know, even on a Sunday or on a holiday court, minors have been released immediately with immediate effect. And even adults, if 304A is applicable, even unfortunately, if somebody has died, nobody is supporting that particular cause. Unfortunate incident has taken place, but people have been released on bail. So it's not the only case in the country which has happened in this particular fashion, point number one. One of the very important submissions that I wanted to make before you. Can a particular accused be treated differently because he belongs from a particular segment of the society or an economic strata? Is that particular accused not entitled for the provisions of law as any other citizen of this country is entitled to. Like, for example, let's say this particular accused was not involved in this matter and it was someone else. Would the law change? It has to be same for everyone. So this particular accused, if 304A was applied against him, he's entitled to move for a bail application, which he did. And he argued on merits. Post arguments on merits, the prosecution very vehemently, let me tell you this, very aggressively opposed the bail application. No one, it was not, it was not something which was quote unquote what has been created as a public perception. Where are we, where are we heading towards when we have this debate that just because he's a so-called a particular now from a particular segment of the society, he shouldn't be granted bail. That that argument will not suffice. No. It's not about the debate on whether because the, uh, uh, the accused in this particular case is being treated differently because he's from a particular strata. It's about if everyone would be treated in this particular way. And why for an offence like this can't a juvenile be treated as an adult if this is a heinous crime as uh, is being seen? So we belong from a country wherein even a terrorist has been granted a right to defend himself. Do we now 
have come to a conclusion that this particular minor does not require legal representation. He should be mob lynched. Can we deny the fact that when the accident, unfortunate accident took place, he was assaulted, he was mob lynched, he was profusely bleeding, everything has happened on record. So do we now agree to a situation that let's forget the judiciary, let's forget... And the he was MCD. drunk driving. Whether he was drunk driving or not, let the evidence come. You and me cannot decide at this stage, premature stage, let it come on record. If he was drunk driving, it will come on record. Then he will meet his fate accompli, whatever it is there before the trial court. Well, Advocate Prashant Patil, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, for giving in your perspective to what the demands are increasingly of uh, this teenager to be tried as an adult, to what the cops are saying. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm also being joined at this point by Aditya Pratap, who's an advocate, and Dr. Dhirendra Kumar, who's a consultant, clinical and trial psychologist and founder for Sai India and Ahead. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. First to you, Aditya Pratap. You, of course, would have heard right now Prashant Patil speak exclusively to Mira now. My first question to you, what would you say to... I mean, how should one really look at this? With what the, uh, the accused lawyer has spoken to Mira now, he seems to be saying that it was argued before the court very strongly with the sections that were put in. Uh, the bail was imminent, it was to be given, and it has been given. There's nothing wrong that has been done in this particular case within 15 hours. So if that's really the point, then is it about a wrong section being put in? You know, uh, give me some time. First and foremost, there's a saying, law is an ass. The sequence of events which have unfolded today once again prove the notion that the law is an ass. We are living in the 21st century where law is not supposed to be an ass. Law is supposed to be a vigilant eagle because the scourge of crime is growing exponentially. Look at the sequence of facts here. We have a child, the son of a very affluent family who takes out a Porsche worth crores, goes to a bar, drinks like a fish and then goes and kills two hardworking people who have come to make a living in Pune. Now, given this factual scenario, let us look at the Juvenile Justice Act. Section 12 of the Juvenile Justice Act says, yes, bill can be, bail should be given to a juvenile, but bail should not be given where it would defeat the ends of justice. Today, within a span of 17 hours, he has got bail. I'll ask one question. Was the public prosecutor given an adequate time to, rebut to give a, a rebuttal whenever we move off bail? Always the say, the reply of the public prosecutor is called for. The public prosecutor and the investigating officer are to apply their minds. In fact, the court calls for the say of the PP. So it automatically spins, spins okay. over by a day or two. And here, same day, I mean, within hours, he's getting bail. I would like to say okay. that this is a case where grant of bail has defeated the ends of justice. Because drunken driving by teenagers, the okay. alcohol that, culture That's is a growing. point that you're making you know, and uh, that also would require of... to be seen into. But Aditya, Aditya, let me just get in at this point and let me, allow me to just make a sentence here because we are dealing with a sensitive case. You have made a statement that he drank like a fish. Well, to be factually correct on this case, let me just put across that part as well. We do not know whether that was the case indeed. That is for the police to make out yet and that is to... Uh, for the for the police to make a case out before the court. But uh, that apart, I get the sense of what you are saying. Of course, you are upset also. But Aditya Pratap, help me to also understand at this point. When you talk about the order that has come up from the court today, about the essay that needs to be written, about um, the, the project that needs to be done with the traffic police, is this usually the norm with the cases that would be tried under the juvenile justice? Is this how it is or is this a big deviation? And that's something that I'm trying to understand legally as well. Yes. Well, let me share with you my personal experience. Four to five years ago, I be appeared before Juvenile Justice board in, board in Bombay when a woman from Lucknow was thrown over, was thrown in front of the coming train by the juvenile. I appeared before the Juvenile Justice Boards. And I don't want to say anything of the proceedings, but right from day one, the disposition of the concerned presiding officer was, he is a child accused. 
he has to be treated with leniency. Now, whatever the law be, the law as it may be, but I, I strongly believe that in numerous instances, the presiding officers do not, you know, fail to acknowledge the fact that the Juvenile Justice Act was passed in the aftermath of Nirbhaya, wherein the crime by juveniles was rising and there was a need for stricter deterrence against crimes by juveniles. So, no, the what I feel is the amendment to the juvenile justice the, was, ju ab, the was passed and, after. Me, me. Just again, a factual thing for our viewers so they don't get confused. Aditya, just a minute. So, basically, it was the amendment to the Juvenile Justice Act. That was the 2015 version that came up after Nirbhaya. Before that, you had the JJ Act 2000 that did not allow for a juvenile to be treated as an adult. Please go ahead, Aditya. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, the 2015 amendment made three categories. Petty offences, serious offences and heinous offences. Now, let me tell you from experience that the Act has a major loophole which was flagged by the Supreme Court, but the government has done nothing to amend it. The definition of a, of a heinous offence is any crime 10 years or more. So, in short, the trouble is, you know, like any crime, the minimum imprisonment, you know, if you see the definition of culpable homicide under the IPC, Punishment for culpable homicide under section 304, it is punishable up to 10 years. There is no minimum imprisonment prescribed for culpable homicide because of which, in several cases, juveniles in conflict with the law have managed to get the benefit of this provision because, because a culpable homicide does not have a minimum imprisonment. It does, it does not fall in the category of heinous offences and that is why they end up being unable to be tried as, as, as adults when there is all the more need for delinquent juveniles okay. to be tried as adults. And Supreme Court, I had appeared in a, in a case wherein the Supreme Court ruling was applied. Supreme Court in its ruling said, it is a serious loophole, right. but unfortunately we are not the parliament, we cannot legislate. And, and the tragedy is, five years have passed, many years okay. have passed, government has done nothing to eliminate this uh, flaw. Okay. Okay. All right, doctor. Um, uh, Dr. Dehrandra Kumar, if I can come to you at this point. Um, sir, with what is unfolding right now, one of the cr critical questions that does come to the fore is, while deciding on a heinous crime, if a court has to decide, there's a board that looks into it, whether the, whether the accused in this particular case was capable of doing this, whether he knows the he or she knows the consequences on this. If you could explain this a bit to us. Actually, if we see in this case, like deciding it is done on the case, case on case basis, but in general, the opinion and the psychological fraternity based on the research is that these adolescents are in a developmental phase and the brain of adolescents is developing. Like they are more prone to do impulsive acts, they are more prone to do risk-taking activities, and the frontal lobe, the front part of the brain that regulates our behavior is, is still developing. So adolescents, treating adolescents as adults would be developmentally inappropriate. But in our country, we have uh, enacted a law. So for that, it has to be uh, done whether they can uh, judge the consequences of their acts. And in no, this case, it, it, if Dr. we see... Dhirendra, if you are saying yes. that, that, that that it's going to be inappropriate to judge an adolescent on the, at the same benchmark of an adult, but in crimes such as this, where the crimes are heinous, if at all it is heinous, it seems heinous for us, but legally, if it is defined as heinous, because in Supreme Court, you've had cases which have been overturned as not heinous and instead as serious alone. So if it's cases like this where it is heinous, uh, the crime really isn't that, isn't, can, can it only be seen psychologically as that of a developmental function of an adolescent? Like, if you see here that uh, we don't have intention of doing that crime. It, the crime, a specific crime was not planned. It was not the intention to commit that crime. The behavior was, if it is true, taking the alcohol, engaging in rest driving, and then resulting in death. So we have to take the things in a developmental perspective of the adolescent mind. Aditya, if I can get you here, important point being made by the doctor, really. 
intent as it were is a very important way of looking at cases legally as well courts really do look at uh, intent as a very specific angle while dealing with juvenile cases is it the same while dealing with adult cases as well well we talk about intent my learned friend the expert here said that there was no intent fact of the matter is if there was intent then the charge of murder 302 would have been been, uh, been added here it may not be a case of intent but here is a case of at least a case of culpable homicide not amounting to murder people say look at a juvenile in, in, with compassion i say because of the current approach being adopted over the last several years of looking at a child in conflict of law with compassion and others their delinquency is growing let's accept it alcoholism has spread in society my learned friend do we have friend any data in fact to say so developmental phrase is growing etc Aditya, do we have any data to say so well i would look at specific well i think one can one can of course look at the national at the national at the national crimes record bureau i can look that up and come back with the data for you but today you have to look at the the tendency among kids as a whole there's a simple saying in english spare the rod and spoil the child and today these children are running over people because the parents have say, failed to sensitize them now one more thing today we have a case where the child was let go in 17 hours let me tell you in the case which had appeared when the child was remanded to the juvenile home the learned member had said that it is necessary for the child to be, to be enrolled in the programs being conducted in the remand home so that he can come on the right path here the the order simply tells him to write an essay work with the police for 15 days in fact such a child it is all the more necessary because his his parental care has failed him when his parents have failed him it is all the more necessary for such a child to be sent to the juvenile remand home where a proper program can be implemented for him sending him back home and asking him to work with the police for 15 days right and essay defeats the law all right okay it is a mockery of the law right, doctor, a fraud uh, on the statute to mar if i could Dr. Dhirendra, uh, there are two aspects to this that are emerging. The... There are those who would argue in this particular case. No, just a minute. Let, let me just sure you can make your point. Yes. Let me just make this question. There are two aspects to this. One that's saying, particularly with respect to juveniles who are committing crimes, teenagers who are committing crimes, they have to be seen from the perspective of being innocent to whatever they, what has eventually happened. That's what the Gujarat court has also said in a very significant um, marked. Uh, case as well and this was by the Gujarat High Court there have been also verdicts by the Mumbai High Court for that matter in similar lines but there's also the other side of it where um, courts have overturned heinous crimes that would have been interpreted by lower courts as heinous but eventually the Supreme Court would have overturned it as serious offense itself so in cases like these how would you ensure or how would you look at the manner in which a juvenile has been treated, an accused particularly. Can you come again? I couldn't get the exact uh, question in between the voice was not there. Okay, there are there are cases where serious case, where heinous cases have been turned over and have been called as serious offenses by Supreme Court. They have overruled the lower courts and said it's not a heinous crime, it's a serious offense, it's a serious crime. So when you have a juvenile, a teenage who is possibly going through all of this while he's been accused of a particular thing, what are we also looking at psychologically here? Like, if you look at this aspect, first point I would like to make uh, from the previous discussion itself, like if we go for categorical punishments, like adults, then there would be a huge psychosocial cost on the society. Because we have seen many cases, juvenile cases, who have done some uh, crimes, and later on they reformed. So we will miss that opportunity. Number two, when any juvenile is uh, like uh, treated, or whenever a trial is run on a juvenile, the juvenile is in a developmental phase. So it has a cost on that juvenile also. So we have to address those aspects also. So we have to provide support during that period to that juvenile. And there are provisions for that. Okay. 
All right. Uh, Aditya, how would you respond to the fact that even within courts, there seem to be so many twists and turns while defining a heinous crime? Like, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on a definition. There doesn't seem to be a consensus on what the benchmark would be legally between courts. You've had different verdicts from the lower court, from the high court, and then eventually Supreme Court. So, um, this definitely is a big grey area legally in the sense that there doesn't seem to be a clear answer. There are so many aspects. And is it particularly because it involves juveniles, it in, you know, in, in the heart of it? Well, I would, I would simply say that had the principles of statutory interpretation been applied, probably this controversy could have, this issue would have been managed and sorted out. Now, I have the highest respect and regard for the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court thought that just because the, there is no minimum punishment prescribed for culpable homicide, it cannot be classified as a heinous crime. I honestly feel that a, simp that a grammatical and a logical interpretation of the statute should have been adopted, wherein any crime which is imprisoned, because see, like up to three years, three to seven years is serious crime, by default any offence which is punishable with seven years or more should have been categorised as a heinous crime. You know, the courts have to find a way through the statute, around the statute, and because how, how it is... Look at what the Gujarat High Court has said in 2023. People, let's just look at this. Let's just look at this. Spare Gets a minute. Two years. Let me just read this out to our viewers <laughs> as well. So, juveniles to be treated as or tried as adults in cases of crime, one, depending upon the child's ability to commit the offence, the circumstances of the case, and the ability to understand the consequences of their action. It's quite varied and very subject to interpretation. No, see, that is Abhidhya? the law drafted by Parliament. It is a duty of the courts to interpret and apply in a responsible manner. Likewise, today, when the child got behind the wheels of his Porsche, he was very well, he, he well knew. He got into his Porsche because he knew the car can do 200 kilometers an hour. And he, who studies in one of Pune's best schools, was well aware that gadi kisi ko kuchal sakti hai. And he was well aware that alcohol is an intoxicant. So I strongly believe that he was well capable of understanding the consequences of his actions. And he took out that sports car in order to show what a spoiled brat he is. He wanted All to right. show off okay. and he will reap um, the fruits I of the show. I understand emotions are running high. Um, Aditya Pratap, thank you for joining us. Um, as well as Dr. Dhirendra Kumar, thank you for joining us. And as I said, we also were joined by Advocate Prashant Patil first, who was who's the advocate for the accused in this particular case. But there's one thing to say in this specific case, it's before the court, it's going to come up before the court. The cops are also going to challenge this. There are so many unanswered questions to this, so many questions, so many aspects of this case that are raising uh, concerns as well, including the order that was given out. But at the heart of this is also the Juvenile Justice Act 2015, the definitions that have been given out and the interpretation that needs to be given to try, uh, the, to try a juvenile as an adult in cases of crime. And that's something that we wanted to drive in. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be following this case very closely. Time for a very short break. But on the other side, do join us for the wrap of all the big news that has happened through the day.